Hey guys, Andre here from PSD Box. Today I have something a bit different than usual. I want to show you um, a photo editor for mobile devices. The application is called Snapseed and it's available for Android and iPhones as well. And from the ones that I tried, it's the best photo editor that I, well, at least that I tried. And that's because you can really gr uh, get some great results out of your pictures as you will see in this uh, demonstration now this is not a review this is not a paid review or something like that i just want to show you this application i will use this image for this demonstration uh, it's an image that i took in ireland um, not long ago and um, i took it with my galaxy s5 so i took it with my phone but I always activate HDR mode, so that's why you can see some details on the on the sky. Otherwise, the sky is, uh, will always be blown out. So the HDR mode on on the Galaxy S5 works pretty well, and I will use this image for this uh, demonstration. So let's uh, jump right into it. Let's share it, and here we'll uh, see the Snapseed um, icon, which is right here. So tap that and we'll open this image in the application this is the interface really simple really basic but it's really uh, comfortable and really easy to work with down on the bottom left you have this um, graphic which if you click you will uh, you will show the histogram of your image I suggest you leave it closed because uh, it will lag the application when you edit it on the bottom right you will have this pen icon, this pencil icon and if you click that you will open the tools and if you scroll down you will find the filters and I'll show you um, some of the filters here but I will not spend much time going in depth of uh, onto each filter because uh, it has a lot of uh, features every filter even though they're, the list is not really uh, not really extends um, each filter has a lot of par uh, parameters and you can really spend some great time in there. Uh, let's focus on the tools, which is what I would like to show you. Most of the times you will be uh, in the tune image uh, menu, which is where you have all the, the adjustments that you can make to your photo and also the details and well, we have some selective uh, tools here and um, all of that. So let's go into the tune image. Uh, apparently nothing happens we have on the bottom we have this white uh, toolbar and here in the middle it shows us what what's the currently selected adjustment in this case the brightness if you want to see the rest of the adjustments all you need to do is just tap on the screen and swipe up and down you will see this menu appearing and you have all the adjustments here i will always start with the ambience because um, photos that you take with your phone are almost always uh, well not always but many times they come up um, underexposed especially if you shoot uh, towards the light so what you do here if you whatever adjustment that you choose here if you want to increase or decrease the effect is you swipe horizontally so let's set, select the ambience and just tap and move towards the right and you can see how we start to add light on the shadows see that I'll leave it to, if you go all the way, you will start to create some halos around objects, so that's not really desirable. So let's leave it to 45, more or less. Then uh, another cool um, adjustment is the highlights. So here you can drop the highlights if you move this to the left. See that? And you get some more definition on the sky. Then um, a bit more of saturation. And the image lacks some brightness. If you take a look at the histogram, you will see um, those small marks. Uh, we have pretty much no highlights, so let's add some brightness to the image, about 30. And um, I will not mess up with the contrast. I think the contrast is okay. Also, you can add some light on the shadows. In this case, it's not necessary. Um, if you want to zoom in, you just pinch with two fingers and with this box here, you can move um, around the image. So, um, oops, let's uh, leave the contrast how it was to zero. And you can also, if you double tap, you can zoom in and zoom out. And what I wanted to do is to 
uh, yeah here on the shadows just add a bit of light on the shadows about 10 or something like that uh, this uh, magic wand is for automatic adjustments I don't recommend using it I don't know if it works well or not but I, I prefer to, to make the changes myself manually and on the top left you have this uh, question mark if you click that you will see a small tutorial and it shows you how to how to use the interface and that's what it does okay let's deactivate that oops close and when you're done with all the adjustments here well the warmth here what you can do is add more warm or more coldness to your image let's leave it to minus six when you're done click this uh, check mark here on the bottom right to apply the filter and you will see that here on the top right now we have this uh, box with the one inside and that means we have one layer of adjustments if you click it you can see the original image and you can select the states here and you can see the change that we made with this if you tap it again you will be able to adjust this so you'll go back inside and readjust the settings or um, you have this um, in the center I don't know what exactly this one is um, I'm not really sure what this is oh yeah if you want to uh, yeah it's kind of like a like a mask like a layer mask uh, so you can um, hide parts of the image and reveal the adjustments that you that you created so I'm not gonna use that let's close it and move on let's go into the details this is to sharpen your image um, and you have two um, adjustments here structure and sharpening the structure if you take a look at the sky here on the on the clouds if you increase that you get more definition on the sky it's almost like the um, like the clarity in Lightroom if you if you use Lightroom and let's not go all the way about 45 or something like that and the sharpness uh, sharpens the smallest details on your image well, let's take a look here and see if we can see it better see that See the difference I'll leave it to about 40 45 as well and let's click OK and wait for the filter to to be applied again let's click this pencil icon and see what else we can do the crop is to crop your image I'm not gonna go into that rotate is to rotate the image transform um, most of the times um, you will not use this this is to correct um, perspectives and stuff like that um, I don't think you will ever need this um, because most uh, mobile phones don't distort uh, images uh, because you don't have wide-angle lenses and stuff like that on mobile devices another cool feature are the selective and the healing the healing is just like in Photoshop like the healing spot uh, brush split the brush healing brush uh, whatever that tool is called and one thing that you cannot do is adjust the size of the brush all you can do is just zoom in and you can see that circle is the size of the brush so the more you zoom in the smaller it becomes so for example if I want to re remove this rock or this part this rock or whatever this thing is here uh, you have to zoom in a bit and then just brush over it and let go and then maybe make some clicks here and there to make sure you remove everything because if you do that when you're while you're zoomed out, zoomed out the, the brush is too big see that it's it's huge and it's too big here on the bottom you can undo and redo your actions using these arrows and it's, it's as simple as that uh, nothing really complicated here so let's click OK to accept the change and let's move on to the selective part the selective tool is quite interesting uh, here you have this plus icon and if it's blue you can add a new selective point on your image let's click this uh, grass over here and you will see this new uh, point here which says B and that's for brightness if you tap and swipe uh, vertically you can change from B to S for saturation or C for contrast and if you want to see the area that it affects it actually has an auto detection mask if you pinch like you were to zoom on the image 
you can see this red area is affected by by this uh, well this adjustment so uh, you can make it smaller or bigger and you can see how it adapts um, to the to the color that you set because if you click and move it you will see this uh, magnifying glass and around it you can see the color changes when you move around the image so if you want to only adjust the greens you can um, put your um, cursor here over the greens and only the greens will be affected and uh, well if you want to add in, in this case brightness we, because we're on the B you can move horizontally and you can add more brightness you can then uh, the same area you can add some saturation if you want so if you want the grass to be more saturated you can do that or you can uh, change the contrast to increase it or decrease it so you can use the three uh, points on the same area maybe it's too bright so let's darken it a bit okay um, so for example we can make the cast a little bit uh, let's add the plus icon again to be blue and click another point there and see oops uh, you can see there are a lot of similar tones so I'll have to decrease these uh, the area here like so and I, here I can add some brightness or maybe decrease the saturation and let's see what we can do with the contrast also you can see if you put negative values that line around the C uh, it's red and if you put positive values it's green let's leave it like that and click OK so that's what you do with the selective uh, with the selective tool now you can see this number here on the top right uh, says four because we now have four layers here and you can add as many as you want um, let's click the pencil icon again you can add the tune you can work on on another tune image tool if you want so um, you can do that the vignette it's as um, as the name says you can add vignetting to your image uh, with the pinch you can uh, increase or decrease the radius and you have two parameters outer brightness so you can um, make the brightness uh, on the outer edges or on the inside of the of the filter I will not accept the change for this because I don't want any vignetting let's go on the filters we have a few filters here uh, I'm not going to go into each of them it's just a matter of uh, um, exploring them um, usually what I do when I edit landscape images I add the HDR scape here uh, obviously most of the time it is too strong so you can lower the effect here you have parameters each filter has its own parameters to work with and here you can see this tag icon if you click it uh, you will be able to select between modes uh, of the fil that the filter has in this case we have nature people um, strong or fine let's leave it on nature and just decrease a bit the effect and maybe increase the brightness a bit and maybe the saturation so about 15 or something like that and uh, well let's try out a filter just to show you uh, lens blur um, is really cool you can make radial or oval radials um, here you can change the the blur strength of course and it works the same swiping horizontally you can increase the amount of effect or decrease it and you can increase the transition of course uh, now I think it's too big oh yeah uh, yeah you can you can also add vignetting uh, when you add this blurring and you can increase or decrease the transition um, if you click here you can choose different shapes um, I don't know exactly what this is for I don't know if, for, if it's for the bokeh effects or what and if you click here uh, on this on the left you can change between radial or you can make this uh, horizontal uh, well linear uh, blurring effects well you can try making um, for example tilt shift effects and stuff like that I will not accept the change that I made with this um, what else drama here you can also create the sort of HDR tones and stuff like that um, um, grunge here it's like for example if you click this on the you can choose different textures um, you can randomize the effect and here you have quite a few parameters to play with uh, and uh, change colors and stuff like that 
what else tonal contrast here you can change the um, the high tones and uh, low tones are stuff like that I'm not gonna go into this um, what else retro looks uh, this is like an Instagram you can choose different overlays and textures and colors and inside here you can for example the scratches you can get rid of them if you set them to zero if you just want the colors light licks uh, what else uh, each filter has its own parameters for lights textures and stuff like that so you can customize this really really nicely um, that's pretty much it I'm not gonna go into each of this full uh, of these filters as I said uh, this one I think works best for portraits uh, but I did not try it, the Glamour Glow. And well, it's just a matter of entering inside each of these and finding out what you can get from them. Let's close that. Let me show you the original image that I... This is the final result of this. Let me show you the original image. So this is what we started with and this is what we ended up with. So it's a good way of, of editing and once you get used to the app you can edit an image like this in literally five minutes and for posting them on Instagram or on social media Facebook or whatever uh, it's a lot better to post an image like this than something like this you can impress people uh, a lot more I guess actually if you're using Instagram use the hashtag PSD box and um, your images will appear on our social wall on, on the website and um, I'll see what what you got with it. So I hope you liked uh, this demonstration. Uh, give it a try, and if you know other um, great apps to edit photos, just post a comment on our website, and we'll give uh, we'll give them a try. That's all for today. I'm Andre from PSD Box, and I'll see you on the next tutorial.